Hey everyone, hope you're keeping well. Following our big announcement last week, we decided that it'd be a really good idea to give a little bit more context as to who we are, what we do, where we live, what we enjoy getting up to, all of that kind of stuff. So with that, over the next couple of weeks, then we plan on doing just that. With that in mind, we're gonna give you a tour of our Toronto condo this week which is our little slice of heaven here in the city. So initially we started looking for a property back in about April, 2021. Rachel and I had been seeing each other for a little bit and we really wanted to live together. However, there was a bit of a geography issue. Rachel was uh, based almost entirely up in kind of the new market Aurora area, which is about an hour north of the city. Meanwhile, my work was still very much in the southwest of the city in a little corner called Liberty Village. So we had a look at everything. We decided that actually there's kind of no middle ground that would really be suitable for both of us. So we decided it was going to either be one or the other. We started our search in the New Market Aurora area. However, we came to the realization that a lot of people who had previously been based in the city when COVID hit, decided that they wanted a little bit of added space. As a result, the market in the suburbs absolutely skyrocketed and prices were very, very disproportionate. As an example, we looked at a small single family home in a not so great area in New Market. The photos on the listing looked amazing, like it had been completely renovated and updated. However, upon viewing it, those were all just veneers. For example, they still had an 80s style clamshell sink, but had just simply painted the existing cupboards to make it look fresh. The listing price didn't tempt us enough to put in an offer because we knew it was gonna to go to multiple bids, but we asked our real estate agent to keep us updated. And in the end, he told us that this house sold for $250,000 over the already inflated asking price. Despite Toronto real estate prices being expensive, we felt that comparatively, the market here was more reasonable. With that, we ended up getting this place and we moved in midway through 2021. With that, we present our two bedroom, two bathroom apartment. What's up, MTV? Oh, no, wrong show. Um, yeah, come on in. We start in the second bathroom. We rarely use this ourselves, but it's occasionally nice to have a separate shower and toilet. We have hosted two sets of guests from England since moving in, and they've made great use of it. But while guests are not here, the bathtub serves as a holding space for Dante's litter box. One of the major perks, besides some of my own artwork from the film Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, incidentally set in this city, is that it also contains our in-suite laundry, which is a huge cost saver for us. When we moved in, we knew that we needed more storage space in the kitchen, so we needed a creative solution for that alongside a dining space. We ended up getting a custom-built island that fulfills both of those needs. However, because we weren't huge fans of the existing countertops, we decided to replace them with the same color as the island, which ended up one, being lighter than what was already there, and two, making the colors uniform across the entire kitchen. The living room couch is from Walmart. Rachel was extremely particular about both the couch color and, for some reason, the style of legs. Nope, I have no idea either. We knew that the dimensions had to be precise due to the size of the apartment, and we also knew that we wanted it to be a pullout so that we could house even more visitors. After searching high and low, we settled on this one and are very happy with it. We got very lucky with the TV situation too, as the previous owner left us the smart TVs that now exist in both the living room and the primary bedroom. The one in this room rests on a dresser that houses some of our clothes. As you can see, in a small condo, space is at a premium, so furniture needs to have multiple purposes. On the walls just above the couch, we do have some more art. Each of these is a scratch map of the world. 
As you can probably tell, travel is very important to us, so this was a very fitting and personalized choice to decorate the apartment. These maps represent our individual travels, with mine on the left and Rachel's on the right. As you can see, Rachel has beaten me by some distance already. As mentioned earlier, this guest bedroom has hosted a couple sets of guests since we've been here. The daybed not only provides us with much needed storage, but also pulls out into a double bed. While it's not being used for that though, then the primary use is Nick's home office. He normally goes into work a few times a week, but uses this space whenever he isn't. Our bedroom is not particularly aesthetic, and the focus here has definitely been on storage. To that end, we have a large freestanding wardrobe for Nick's clothes to complement the built-in wardrobe that I use. We also have a queen bed, and this rests under our favorite piece of art, which is another scratch map, this time documenting all of the places that we've been together. We'll look forward to scratching many more places off during the course of this year. The bed then faces the other smart TV, which unsurprisingly means we spend a lot of time in here catching up on our favorite shows. That then leads to our ensuite bathroom, which is a decent size. You'll notice that the shower curtains in both bathrooms have some photographs on them. Both of these are ones that I have taken during my time here in Canada. The first one being from Huntsville, near Algonquin Park, and the other one being of the Toronto skyline from the Toronto Islands. Both of these shower curtains were ones that we got from a seller on Etsy and we've used them to inject a little bit of added personality into our apartment. The main selling point of this condo, besides its great location though, is the view from the balcony that spans the entire width of the apartment and gives us a 180 degree view of the Toronto skyline. If you look to the right from the balcony, you'll see Lake Ontario and Billy Bishop Airport. Looking straight ahead is an unobstructed view of the CN Tower and the rest of the city. And then if you look left, you'll be able to see up to Casa Loma. The ability to wake up to the sunrises and enjoy the sunsets in this city has been out of this world and we genuinely have to pinch ourselves to believe it. With that, we hope you enjoyed this tour of our humble abode. For now, take care. And keep smiling.